In the decade that followed the turn of the 20th century, America was a changing nation. Cities were expanding like never before. The family car replaced the horse and carriage, and Sears Roebuck allowed people across the country to enjoy life's finer things. But for one man, the changes sweeping the nation paled in comparison to the transformation that was thrust upon him. In 1912, Braille Institute's founder, J. Robert Atkinson, was blinded by a gunshot. He would forever see only darkness. From out of this darkness, Atkinson would create Braille Institute, an organization that would become a beacon in the night for himself and countless others around the world. By the time the United States entered World War I in 1917, Atkinson had taught himself Braille and begun transcribing books for his own library. As the war raged in Europe, Atkinson was fighting his own battle. Brailed materials were in short supply, so he took it upon himself to transcribe whatever he could get his hands on. In 1919, the Treaty of Versailles brought the conflict to an end, and soldiers, successful in their cause, returned home to their families. But for Atkinson, the work was far from over. With a gift of $25,000 from John and Mary Longyear, Atkinson created the Universal Braille Press, and books began to pour off this newly minted machinery. The 1920s saw America transformed. Harry Houdini captivated the nation. The stock market soared, and prohibition created an underworld of self-indulgence. While the country reveled in the good times, the Universal Braille Press continued to provide reading materials for America's visually impaired. On September 30th, 1929, as the Roaring Twenties came to a close, the Universal Braille Press officially became Braille Institute of America. On October 29th, 1929, the good times came to an abrupt end. While the Great Depression ravaged the country, Braille Institute refused to succumb to the pessimism that hung like a shroud over the nation. In 1931, as a direct result of Atkinson's lobbying, Congress passed the Pratt-Smoot Act, which established funding for the publication of Braille literature. Soon after, Atkinson pressed Congress to create the National Library Service, and Braille Institute was named a regional branch. Even as the country struggled with an unprecedented economic challenge, Braille Institute expanded its reach and looked to the future. In 1941. The United States was forced into war again, and the country had a renewed sense of purpose. Every American was asked to do their part, and the staff and students of Braille Institute were no different. They created special Braille books for soldiers that were blinded in the conflict. Even while doing their part for the country, Atkinson and the staff at Braille Institute never lost sight of the need to expand their services and ensure their long-term relevance. By the end of the decade, this forward thinking was rewarded as construction of a new two-story headquarters was completed on Vermont Avenue. With the war over, America stood stronger than ever, as did Braille Institute. The 1950s found modern technology working its way into the homes of average Americans. At Braille Institute, a new tradition of technology was also emerging. The first low vision consultations were offered, and new magnification and lighting technology were developed. Technology was making low vision a manageable condition rather than a handicap. In 1957, J. Robert Atkinson retired from Braille Institute. This change in leadership came just before the country as a whole began to experience radical changes of its own. The 1960s were rife with conflict. The civil rights movement and the war in Vietnam created great divisions in American society. Despite a divided nation, Braille Institute worked to foster the sense of community that its staff and students had come to rely on. The first Braille Institute auxiliary was founded. Programs for youths were introduced and quickly expanded. As the 70s began, the conflicts that had splintered the nation showed no signs of abating. Yet Braille Institute continued to look ahead and focus on expansion. In 1971, the first regional center was opened in Orange County. The opening of the Palm Springs Center followed just two years later. As the decade progressed, the divides that had defined much of the last 10 years began to heal. Braille Institute was uniquely positioned to take advantage of the fragile optimism that was taking hold. New auxiliaries sprang up, and volunteer enrollment surged. Braille Institute had weathered the storm. And was ready for whatever lay ahead.